Hi everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update this evening. I trust and hope you're doing great. I hope you've been enjoying your day. And we're going to be taking a look at these two tropical storms. So Philippe, as well as newly designated Rena. So Rena is what was previously known as 91L. It has reached the threshold to be considered a tropical storm. And as such, earlier this morning, the National Hurricane Center began issuing advisors on the system. And so there's a lot of uncertainty up ahead as I've highlighted in in my previous update and we're going to be taking a look at the latest coming from the NHC as well as what models have to show so let's get on with it and we're going on to the satellite imagery here we can see both of them still quite disorganized out there uh, and they're in very close proximity to each other and that is going to be helping to influence a lot with what eventually happens for both of these systems across other area sections of the Caribbean going to northern south and Central America we can see that there is some thunderstorm activity in some spots so those white dots you're seeing those are indicating lightning strikes and the new tropical wave is off the african coast icon showing something interesting thinking that we could see some development of that system down the road but of course i'll be on top of it for you guys still too early to tell in this wave has not been marked to be watched for the next seven days at a closer look at the region here we can see that there is all this thunderstorm activity happening across some spots there is still that trough in the area which is helping to enhance some showers and thunderstorms some thunderstorms across sections of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, which includes Haiti and the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Cuba, and also in some parts of Central America, and as I said, Northern South America as well. Even down in Trinidad, there was some thunderstorm activity which uh, has been lifting up north and dissipating, but for most of the Lesser Antilles, most of the Eastern Islands, it has been a rather hot and dry day, something that we're all too familiar with. And it would be good to actually get a bit of rainfall from Philippe. That remains in the picture, but by the way so even though there are new trends that uh, the system could go all over the place and it might remain outside the Caribbean it is still worth watching and I want to point out why later down in this video with our models so let's go on to the cone forecast uh, starting out with arena and by the way this is the 11 a.m. update although I'm not expecting a big change for the 5 p.m. update but uh, it should be out by the time this video is posted so here we can see that as of the 11 a.m. update arena was sustaining wind of 40 miles per hour and moving to the north northwest at 10 miles per hour so not moving as slowly as philippe and we can see here that throughout this time frame it is expected to remain a tropical storm and well away from the caribbean so it's not expected to move into the region and bring any impacts and then uh, in the long term in terms of any impacts for bermuda i'll keep an eye on that for you guys but for now imminent impacts are not expected aren't likely let's go ahead and take a look at what is going on with Philippe. So here is the latest cone forecast for it. We can see here that it is sustaining winds at 50 miles per hour and it is making its way to the west northwest at 2 miles per hour. So in the 11 a.m. update, Philippe was moving 3 miles per hour slower. Uh, it was moving at 5 miles per hour at 5 a.m. and now in the and then in the 11 a.m. update around 2 miles per hour. So it's a very slow moving storm out there. Still lopsided as it is being impacted by that wind shear. And a whole lot of intensification is not anticipated over the course of the coming days. And we can see this huge contrast in the cone compared to yesterday. So uh, there has been this new shift. Although as I said, we want to still keep watch for potential impacts to northeastern islands. Because that is not off the table. We're seeing a new trend here but that doesn't necessarily mean the system will follow with it as a matter of fact this is the cone here and look at how wide it is that is because the center of it can pass anywhere within it and this is to track the center so even if the center is just offshore with enough activity being associated with it then it could still uh, result in some impacts maybe not anything too crazy but nonetheless I mean northeastern islands have been uh, in need of that increase in rainfall activity so that would be some good news bad news would be be something persistently bring in a lot of heavy rainfall which is what some of our models are showing and as I speak let's go ahead and take a look at some model data beginning with the euro so this is as we're going to be heading into Tuesday of next week so we're seeing that between now and Tuesday the storm isn't expected to be moving 
a whole lot. So that is the expected position of it just offshore of the Northern Leeward Islands. And take a look at all those colors, those greens, those pots of yellows. Now that is indicating the average precipitation rate. So a lot of moisture in association with the system. So uh, with very close proximity to the islands, especially as a disorganized system, there could be that rainfall increase. Then uh, eventually Euro has it loitering around until it makes its way out. And then going on to the Canadian model, Canadian is showing something very interesting as well, showing that by that time, the system would make its way into the Caribbean, moving across the northern Leeward Islands and heading toward the vicinity of Puerto Rico as a tropical storm, bringing those impacts, then eventually making its way out and uh, trying to intensify out there. But take a look at the Western Caribbean. So Canadian has been consistent about this for some time now. And even other models such as GFS uh, is starting to pick up on that potential system brewing in either the Western Caribbean or over in the Gulf of Mexico. And as I've pointed out in previous updates, that is going to be an area to watch because uh, that is where we typically see development as we head to the latter part of the hurricane season. Here we are as we head to Sunday, the 8th of October, not very far out from now, just over a week, we can see that system trying to get itself together, that broad system over in the Gulf that the Canadian model is expecting. Now, this is not a guarantee, but will definitely be something to look out for and of course you know me i'm on top of everything for you guys now the icon model icon is showing something rather interesting here so unlike what the nhc is showing where the system is going to be remaining outside the region and then uh, making its way out the icon has it actually making its way into the vicinity of the northern leeward islands and loitering around before uh, eventually making its way out and also showing something else approaching as we're going to be heading to the latter of next week that other tropical way that i showed you guys earlier uh, that one may be making its way west and trying to organize into something, but development intensification is all going to be dependent on the environmental conditions and that is no guarantee as to this point in time so we definitely have to keep watch on all these systems as we head throughout the next couple of days now finally we're taking a look at what the gfs model has to show so unlike other models which are keeping philippe as a pretty weak cyclone and that seems pretty likely by the way gfs is showing some crazy intensification of it it has been a little bit consistent about this this is as we had to mention the 2nd of October there is whatever is uh, left of Rena there is Philippe look at that pressure look at how tightly packed those black lines are so it is showing a well-defined hurricane at this point to the east of the Leeward Islands we see a pressure of 946 millibars signifying major hurricane status before the system eventually makes its way out not being a bother for anyone now in the latter part of the run headed to not next Friday but the following Friday the 13th of October there we see something else for in and in the Gulf. So GFS is also expecting that we may see some development in the Gulf and eventually as we head to Saturday the 14th of the month, the end of the run here, it is showing that uh, we could see that tropical storm there, that broad low pressure area really. So very interesting. We're seeing these new trends and this is something that seems pretty much possible. Now, going back to Philippe and Arena, so they're likely undergoing a phenomenon which is called the Fujiwara effect. It might sound very fancy and difficult to understand, but basically what happens is that with these two storm systems, these two low pressure systems out there, if they're of similar intensity, what we will see happen is that they'll try to rotate around each other before making their way out on their separate paths. But uh, if we're talking about a big contrast in intensity with one system being much stronger than the other, then the weaker one is likely to be absorbed by the strong one. So there's a lot of uncertainty if uh, we'll see the latter actually happen with Philippe and Arena. But so far, models are showing that we will have both of these separate systems out there. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye and I'm here to keep you posted as per usual. So that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update. I trust and hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.